Hello everyone! Have I got a fun video for all of you nerds out there. That's right. The thing that I've been talking about for a while, the Line 6 Helix Stadium. I got it. Yeah, that's right. I got it. And you know what? There's a lot of people out there. They get the Line 6 Helix Stadium. And what do they do? They strap on their guitar. They plug in the guitar. They plug it to the Helix. And they just start rocking out. Yeah, not this guy. <laughs> what I did is I created a preset and I called the preset latency test. And the way I set it up is I did USB three and four, three, three and four on there for the inputs and the outputs. And I set it up with nothing on there, no blocks, no nothing. The reason why is I wanted to test the USB latency and see what the results were. Uh, let me put on my glasses here and look over everything. So yes, I created the preset. And then what I did is there's a program that's out there called RTL Utility. It's a free program that you can get. You can just download it and you can run it on Mac or Windows. And what it does is it sends a test signal out to whatever inputs and outputs you selected. So what I did is I selected inputs and outputs, USB three and four on there. And then you just click the measure RTL and let it do its thing. You see the little bleep happening on the levels and then it measures that for you. There was a warning on there that said something about the drivers are uh, reporting something different. Uh, let's see, the measure latency is very different from what the drivers are reporting. Take this with a grain of salt. I did what I could. I ran the test several times and it reported similar results, not exactly the same each time. It could be right or it could be wrong. Another way of being able to test it is to be able to see what is actually reported to the DAW. And the DAW that I was using is Logic. So I set it at different buffer sizes for that as well too. Let me show the results here. This is the RTL utility results. And you can see I ran it at buffer sizes. These are the typical ones that I always set. 256, 128, 64, or 32. Usually I set mine to probably 64. Uh, seems to be pretty good because it's uh, stable. At least it is for the system that I have. Um, I'm running everything on the Apple M1 Max processor. It's a Mac Studio. It's from a couple years back, I can't remember exactly um, how far back it went, but uh, what's key with this is single core performance. The reason why it's audio, it's instant, it's there. It's it, it's not um, it's not uh, so like plugins and things like that, which you use during the mixing process. It's when you're recording at the moment directly through the sound card. So single core performance is very important for that. That's one thing to, to sort of uh, get an idea of is that if you're using a different CPU, especially if you're using one of the Macs, look at what the single core performance is and compare it to the number that I have. It's around 24, 2500 um, is the score that I got. So if yours is higher or lower, if it's you know better, uh, score, then you'll probably get a little bit better latency. If it's lower, then you'll probably not get as good latency on there for the results. Uh, like I said, this is through a Mac. PCs can be a whole different thing because all the different parts and everything have to work together and depending on what sound card you have and all that and motherboard, all the other kind of stuff like that. With Macs, don't have to worry about it. It's all one system. You know, It's just a matter of which version that you have. Here are the results also for Logic. Here's the 256 samples is what I had. Um, you can see it's about a uh, close to 17 millisecond round trip latency on there. Uh, for the 128 buffer size, I got 11.6 milliseconds round trip on there. Going down to 64, which is what I typically set mine at, it's 8.9 milliseconds round trip. And then all the way down to 32, which I can run it at that and it seems to be relatively stable on the system that I have, but I try not to, I'm gonna give a little breathing room. I'm a, I don't want to sit there and let's like, you know, push things too hard and, and make things pop and crackle. Nah, I don't want to, I hate that. So at 32 buffer size, it's 7.6 milliseconds round trip latency on there. So the good part is that the results are 
definitely better than the original Helix. Um, that was way higher from what I saw. Uh, but the thing is, there's room for improvement with these USB drivers. And it's a matter of developers going through and seeing the code and trying to optimize it to run on different systems. There could be a thing where they have their not don't go with core audio, which is the what Mac uses. Uh, it's sort of like a generic uh, driver um, for a Mac. So if they go with their own individual driver, they might be able to improve it a little bit. So I'm hoping that's part of what they're going to do later on. I mean, this thing just came out. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be picky. The thing's awesome. Let me just tell you, it is freaking awesome. I love it. It is. It's been amazing. I'm so excited about it. I'm excited about the future for this thing. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything bad about the Helix whatsoever. It's just the latency a little higher than I was hoping for. Now, the way that I sort of uh, look at latency is that um, an easy way to sort of explain it is that for every millisecond of latency you have, it's kind of like very close to being, say, a foot away from something from a source. So if you're five feet away from your guitar amp, which is typically how on a band setup you'd have it, you could be maybe up to 10 feet away, which it's there. It's, it's, farther away and you're going to have a little distance there. So you're going to feel a little something different, but not too bad. Um, I have noticed I'm pretty sensitive to latency. That's why I talk about it so much and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for me, I found that a good benchmark for latency is what Mac is able to offer through their headphone jacks and through their audio interfaces, especially the headphone jack, not speakers. Uh, they can get it down to five milliseconds, which is pretty freaking awesome. I mean, of course, it's self-contained system. It's their headphone jack on there, but five milliseconds, that's a good solid you know, setting to, to be able to get it down to. And what I say, this one, the 32 buffer size was 7.6. Close. It's very close. And to me, it's actually doable, but I really think they could improve this. So hopefully they take the time to do that. And, um, we'll see. It just depends. Like I said, this is firmware, the very first 1.1 firmware. I just did the update for it and got it running before I ran the test. I updated the RTL utility as well too, before running the test, everything, this is, this is what I got. So this is, I uh, just wanted to share this information with, with everyone. Now, if, uh, anyone wants to download the RTL utility and test it out in your system and put a comment down below and let me know what your results are. This would be good if we could all get together as a community and have the results in one place and say, Hey, this is what I got on my system. And maybe someone out there will see it. One of the line six developers will see this and go, yeah, you know what? There's a lot of people that are interested in this. And there's a lot of people that use virtual instruments, like for drums and keyboards and things like that. And they want to have a single interface that does everything. Their workflow is great because they're not switching back and forth. Like I use a Motu. It's, um, ultralight, um, uh, Mark, uh, shoot Mark five, uh, setup that, if, that I have, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank, but anyways, yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful interface. I love that thing so much. It is just rock solid and it's great. And I can get down to about two milliseconds of latency, like two to three, but it, it is, oh, it's so good. I highly recommend any of the Motus and there's other ones that are out there that are really good. Universal Audio is, is really good with their Thunderbolt drivers. Of course, RME is really good. Uh, Focusrite is another one that's good. So there are good companies out there. There's some other ones that, uh, eh, <laughs> not that good. Now, here's the thing is if, if you're not using virtual instruments, like for drums and keyboards and stuff like that, it's not going to matter as much to you. And I understand this is, this is more for people that do everything in the box. You know, they, they have their system, they have their workflow and they're, they're doing things like me. That's what I do. Yeah. This is an interesting finding. We have some time and, and there's, hopefully there's, they're going to concentrate on this and improve the drivers eventually with the latency. I mean, USB drivers, they really matter. It's, it's how efficient that they're written. 
and how well optimized they are on different systems. And single core is a big part of it. Uh, so basically, it's like MIDI note triggers the plugin. The plugin generates the sound um, using the CPU core. The audio driver collects and processes the audio for each buffer cycle, and the audio interface outputs the signal. So it's got to go through, go through all that stuff to be able to make sound on your computer. If you're all uh, interested also, I am creating Helix presets and pretty soon I'm going to have Helix Stadium presets coming out real soon. And what what I do is I try to create I'm trying to make creative presets where everything's logically laid out. I have them for the original Helix and I have them for the HX Stomp as well too. Just go to afteraudio.com and there's a page on there called Helix. Uh, just go there and look down below on the description. It'll have all that information. If you want to see the actual results for this as well too, I'm going to have a link down below. You can click on that. It goes to my website and there's a blog page that talks about the stadium latency test results. So you can check those out there. Please also check out my music, uh, all the other kind of stuff. Uh, I uh, found this very interesting and I hope you did too. Well, I think that's about it. You all take care. Have a wonderful day. And I hope everyone gets together and shares their latency results and, you know, and let me know how it is with your system. I'm very curious about that. All right. Take care. See ya.